what we're going to do today is we're going to look at some of the training tools mm -hmm. that you can get on chess.com. Um, now, I should point out that there's also a lot of other great free training tools. YouTube, Lee Chess has a lot of great stuff as well. But um, this is like a model, like no matter what you're using, here's some of the things that you need to focus on. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, Pontus is on the call as well. And I think he has some comments he might have about chess.com training as well. But let's just get right into it. Um, I am going to start with what I think is perhaps the most important thing. And that is, can anybody guess? One of the most important things for you, um, for using um, your chess.com diamond account, and even in other sites, like if you use resources in Lee Chess, what do you guys think is most important? Um, let's see, Yvonne, do you know? Yes, Adaswa, exactly, Maureen Good. But I would say puzzles and tactics are extremely important, especially when you haven't spent a lot of time on them. Um, we, we like to call it a learning curve. When you haven't um, studied a lot of puzzles, you will get a lot, lot better just by studying puzzles. Now, if you've been doing puzzles and um, for two years straight, um, it, it might not have as big of an impact. At that point, you might need to do new things. But if you have not been doing a lot of puzzles in your work in chess yet, I guarantee you that if you put time into it every day, you will start crushing people that you're losing to now. I mean, this is like a 100% guarantee. So not, I, not every person, but some of the people that you're losing to now, you will start beating. So there's a lot of different ways to do puzzles on chess.com. And one really fun way is called Puzzle Rush. So we are going to practice that right now and I'll explain to you how it works. Okay, we're gonna do a three minute because these are the ones that I do when I stream. Um, and we're going to do this together. So what I want you guys to do is type in the chat when you find the right answer. Okay, our score is not gonna be that high because of course it's a little bit uh, logistically difficult to look at the chat and then type it in, but uh, it'll give you an idea of how this works, okay? Yeah, and the, the thing is that you compete against someone else. That's also oh, important. That's puzzle battle. Yeah. They can do puzzle battle as well. This is just regular puzzle rush. Ah, uh, you go with the rush. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in this one, you're basically competing against yourself. Okay, somebody type in the chat to move here. So it's white to okay. move. Okay. What do I do? Okay, I'll give you the second move. Excellent. Um, Dasha, very good. Nam, good. Okay, black to move. Now we're on the next one, black to move. So what should black do? Bishop there you go. All right, white to move. You can, you can use, you can unmute yourself and shout it out too. I don't mind. Okay. There we go. Um, rook takes h2 here is wrong. Queen, Queen h2. h2. Bingo. There we go. Okay, this is actually how do we respond to a check? What would you do here? Bishop b7. I think somebody said bishop b7. I thought they said bishop c6, which was the right move, but that's okay. Next problem. Queen times, um, queen times seven. Checkmate. Very good. Okay, next one. Queen D. Queen D. One check. One. Now, what do you guys want to do? Rook D2. Rook D2. Rook D2. Check. I'm going to give you that one. All right, guys. Next one. Black to move. Rook H3. Rook B3. Check. Rook H3. Check. Rook times B2. 
Got it. Great. Now what? Um, look at six um, queen captures. Right? Queen captures at three. Who said queen takes page three? Eight. Look at no. six. We had to go rook takes eight three. Somebody might have said that too. Okay, now what? Um. <clears throat> now we're seven, running out of time. Nine, 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 bishop e e n times four. bishop g. Okay, now what? Queen times f seven. Oh man. Okay, there we go. So we got ten. We got 10 and the idea is, of course, it's much harder because everybody was yelling out and I'm using the mouse to relay what you guys are saying. So that's like way, way harder. All of you are gonna get much higher scores than this, um, but that's the idea. And then you see, I got a 10. So you guys wanna play one more time and try to beat the 10? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to um, start our next one and we'll just have a little fun. Okay, guys. Okay, black to move. Rook H1 check. Rook takes C1 check. Rook D1 check. Rook D1 check. Good. So always look for the checks first. Rook F1 check. Rook F1 check. Rook takes A1 check. Rook. Rook, rook takes d7. Yeah. Good. Um, knight times f7 check. Rook takes f7. f7. Rook takes rook. Then rook That's times f7 checkmate. Well, that we were oh. in check. So, okay. Um, black to move. Rook e1 rook check. One check. One check. Bishop, Bishop check. E Bishop, Bishop E5 check. E5 check. check. Bishop, Bishop takes times D6. Mm. Queen G4 check. Queen where check? H4. Queen H4. Queen H3 checkmate. Good. Um. Queen D, no, 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 no. Queen D3. Beautiful. Yeah. Good. Queen knight no, times knight F times F knight times knight. Seven check. Um, queen, queen seven check. Seven check. Now what? Rook E. Rook, Rook E seven, seven check. Seven check. Good. This is called deflection. Very, very uncommon type of um, queen, queen f5 check. Great. All right. Queen h5. Now what, guys? Um, rook g6. Rook g6. Yeah. Queen takes, queen takes h8 check. Queen. Where's the check? Look at checks. Queen A1. Queen A1. Queen. Yeah, Queen Queen, Queen A1. Um. Knight. Knight F3 should be check. Queen A3 check. Yes, Good. we did it. So you got the four. So you got four more than last time, and that's exactly the game. Like um, right now, what I wanted you guys to do for homework, I, I want you to do the five-minute version, not the three-minute version, because just for the sake of time, I was doing the three-minute version. But I prefer you to do the five-minute version. So you go here, and you go to Puzzle Rush, and you can also do the survival version. Five, and and I want you guys to try to get the highest score you can in the next two weeks. Um, and we'll take a look at the different scores and see who has the highest. I think right now Bernice has a pretty high score. I noticed she's been working on it. So that's great, Bernice. Um, I think uh, Hannah was answering a lot of the questions. So I'm guessing she also is, does this. 
uh, mm -hmm. and just try to keep your, your score getting higher. And let's see who has the highest puzzle rush score in a, in a couple weeks. Any questions? So really you're competing against yourself. I just want you to have another incentive to get as high as possible. Um, so whatever your score is, your goal is to beat your own score. Um, so the most improved is actually something else that we could be looking at in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so that's and, one way. And, and then there is, there is also um, the possibilities to, if you want uh, some, to get more into a like, uh, real game situation, there is also the possibility to compete against others. So you can go for puzzle battle. And that well, means that you actually compete against, uh, you can compete against each other within the group, uh, or you can compete against someone else in the world that sits somewhere else. Exactly, uh, and that's this and, one right here. Yeah, and then it's about to solve the problems the, the fastest as possible. <laughs> I can, so, I can. <laughs> I have a couple of friends here in the group I could challenge. I'm not gonna do that now, but this is a great way to also, we get the same problems and then we see who gets the most right. Um, so that's an excellent way too. Now, suppose you have an, your internet connection is not that good. You're using your phone. Then you might wanna do just classic puzzles. You know, no, yeah. no specific time limit. I think there actually is some time limit, but it's not really about the time. It's more about getting it right. Um, you yeah. get a little bit more rating if you get it right quickly. And yeah. the ones are really good for those moments when you don't necessarily have a good connection to do Puzzle Rush. Yeah, and this is a good start also. You can just start here, you know, take it easy. Yes, in the start, it's, it's more important to get them right in the start than to try to do anything fast. That, exactly. that, that's, that, that's not uh, important. That uh, comes later. The first thing is to, to start with these puzzles get them right, start to understand and use the, the, the method that I told you, forcing chess moves. Can anyone repeat what's the categories? What, should, what kind of moves should you look for? And in what order? For, what was the first one you should look for? For check. Yeah, for checks, good. And second? Captures and forcing moves. Yeah, so if the checks doesn't work, then look for captures. If the captures doesn't work, then look, try to find a threat in the position. And this is this is how you work with tactics. And there is also a very good page that uh, Jennifer is going to show you. The idea here is that if you have a name for something, it's easier to remember it. It's just like anything in life. If you know the name of a concept, then you will be better able to execute it. I mean, double attack is one of the absolute most important tactics in chess. I'd say it's the number one because it comes up so often. And here they're kind of describing it for you. And these, these puzzles are simple, but I think the more important thing is to kind of internalize that name. If you have some paper lying around, even write it down because that helps you remember things sometimes or write in your phone. Uh, these types of ideas will really help you. Where's the deflection one that Pontus mentioned? Um, that's yeah, here, here, here it's um, here it, it comes from here, uh, and here we have sometimes. all these kind of tactical motifs. Like you have skewers, you have pins, you have forks. What is a fork, by the way? Can anyone tell me what a fork is? What is a fork? Attacking two pieces at the same time. Yes, and it's also called. Is there another name for that? What double is, attack. Yeah, double attack. So it's called fork or double attack. And you should all go through this page and uh, we, we will type it in the chat and, and uh, we will also um, make sure that you get it. Uh, we will type it in the, uh, in the chess club as well. So, and the ones who hasn't joined the chess club at chess.com, please do that. Uh, we should also put that link up, Jennifer. Or, yeah, or yeah let me do that. Yeah, and yeah. Um, this is the deflection. I'm, I pulled that up right there. Yeah. So that's really important. Tactics, um, your decoy, your deflection, your definitions. Uh, there's also a part on chess.com called drills, which is great. And that is for both end games and for checkmates. So uh, you can start with all sorts of cool stuff. There's even some on attacking, which I think is kind of new. When uh, they had drills like a year ago, I think it was mostly end games, but they've added stuff 
like practicing your attacking and you're basically doing it against the computer. So it's like a built-in lesson and you can try any of these. They'll challenge you about what you should do. Um, here's one on development. This is probably, this is the first one. So it's probably the simplest one. And look at me, I've got this crushing advantage here because I've developed all my pieces and my opponent has apparently gone night F6 to night G8 <laughs> over and over again. And then it asks us, what do we do here? So what would you guys do here? Pawn E4 to, to E5. Okay, so it says E5, and then it's gonna tell us how we're doing. Um, it says E5 is best, the very best move. Awesome, I love it because you're being aggressive when you already have this strong position. We've only got five minutes until we start our tournament. So I don't think we're gonna necessarily play this one out, but this is like super fun. And this is actually a pretty new feature of chess.com. I don't think this was around even a year ago. So definitely play around with the drills. Uh, I also wanna draw your attention to the end game fundamentals. Do the end game fundamentals in the end game practice. So important, okay? Uh, especially things like, uh, for those of you who haven't done a lot of pawn end games, you'd really want to do the pawn game section, which I believe is in the other one, the fundamentals, yeah. The end game practice is more like practical end games. The end game fundamentals are all this king and pawn stuff. You must do this. This stuff is so good. Um, the great chess coach and writer Yasser Sarawan said that if you study end games, it's like cheating on a test because you know that you're going to get those questions. So you're yeah. getting the answers to the questions you know you're going to get. So it's important. End games are important. Um, and there is also the, the openings. Uh, they are not in the drill area. We will, there are the videos, yeah? And they will, you have the openings as well there. You've got like so. summaries of the openings here in this stage where they yeah. give you all the different openings. So you, so you, again, the names of the openings, it's really nice because you can kind of get a, a vibe for it. You know, you see the position, do you like it? You look at the name um, and then you can click on it and it'll show you the most popular ways to proceed in the opening, right? And a little bit of a description too. So this yeah. is a fantastic resource for you to kind of like dip the water and understand um, what you can do in the opening stage and what openings you like. And then as Pontus also mentioned, there are- And uh, also please look at the, the bars down there. You can see the moves. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are the, the actually the moves that grandmasters like myself are playing. So you can see here, what is the most popular move? And you can even see some games. You, you have uh, just above there, there is a bunch of games. So you can see how many games that have been played in this and that they have based the stats on because all this is statistics. And so you can figure out from that what are the best moves just by seeing that. And if you play a move that is not inside this moves, it's probably not one of the best or it is for sure not one of the best. And then we've and got um, videos which is yeah exactly and the videos can also help you to deepen your understanding there of the openings and also of, of strategical topics and strategical themes so the videos yeah go ahead Pantas. so it's very good uh to use i mean go on some exploration trip on your own a little bit until next session and try to figure out you know what what do we have here and you can see it here you have the the videos with the openings so then you can start at the last page uh where, where you have the openings to see the different ones and then you can go here to watch a video and get deeper so you deepen your your, your knowledge and do that with the openings because this i would say is usually the biggest weakness that i can see in in people's play uh is is the openings that i see that there is a lack of this because more or less no one has had access to this before so work with that and use use your time and use your accounts you know this diamond accounts there are people uh they are they are usually quite expensive and uh people pay for them 
and you have got a good chance now. You got it for free. Uh, so please use your accounts. Don't yeah. enter one once per month or something like this. Enter as much as you can. And try to ask your parents uh, to enter as, as often as you can, as is possible. Uh, and, and do your practice. Because this is a good chance for you to get much better quickly. So there's the link. Try to register. Pontus and I are going to talk about the games. And then um, we're also at the very end going to look at a couple of the openings. This should take about 25 minutes. So the tournament itself will only last till around 11. And then we'll spend the next 10 minutes going over how you would one of the best games from the event and how you would use the opening explorer to analyze that game. And then we might have like five minutes for questions. Uh, we'll end around 1115. So uh, that's how it's going to work the next 10 minutes. Yeah. And you, the, the key is that basically train on the puzzles. And when you have done the puzzles, the, the ultimate goal is, of course, that you're going to use that, those skills in your own games. So that's, that's why you are training with the puzzles. That's why you're learning the tactics. So when you play now, look in your games, try to, to find the tactics by using the method with forcing chess moves. So look for the checks, the captures, the threats, and that's how you win games. There's only 17 seconds left to join. You need to be on this link and then you need to click that big orange button to get in the event. Um, would be great if we could get one more. Okay, perfect. So that we can have um, an even number or two more now. <laughs> we got two seconds though, so. Don't worry if you're not in the event because we are gonna watch these games and that's gonna be fun. And I think we're actually gonna use Opening Explorer as we watch them. Let's look at um, Ponta Girls game and I will put it on Okay, the game hasn't started yet. Let's look at the other games then. Let's look at Bernice's game. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna click on this lined button, right? Now, of course you're not allowed to do this during the game. It won't even be enabled because you can't look at lines during a um, blitz game. By the way, you can during a daily game. So if you're playing one of those, like you play three moves every day, um, you, you play a move every, every three days, um, you can actually use the game database. You cannot use um, computer engine analysis, but you can go to the database and study the opening or a, a book if you were to have one or a video. Um, so that, that's important to know. But during a game, this is not enabled, but for us watching it, it is. Mm -hmm. And now Black's played a really yeah. good opening. Anybody know what this one is called? <laughs> so what is what is this opening called? You can you can actually cheat and not it's not cheating, but you can look right here. Yeah. It tells you right there. So this is called the Greenfelt, and it's an extremely difficult opening that is um, very popular among grandmasters. And basically, the key here is that Black gives up the center to white, so white has the central pawns on e4 and d4, and the c3 pawn is strengthening the center, and then black's idea is to attack the center, usually with c5 later. And it's the, the king's, so this move, um, c6 here is not the best. Why? Does anyone know why? Why is knight c6 not the best move? Somebody who's not playing in the tournament, of course. Um, Valentine, are you playing? <sighs> Elizabeth, are you playing? I don't think Elizabeth's playing. Elizabeth, why is knight c6 not the best move? Don't hear you. Maybe you can chat it. Maybe she can type it. Yeah, you can maybe you can type it in the chat. Um, anybody else? The clue is something that Pontus said. Black's activity in this position is to do what against this pawn? By the way, Bernice is playing fantastically. Great job, Bernice. Um, the, the key is to pressure white center. And you do that by using this pawn 
And what does the knight do to that pawn? Yeah, so the knight actually blocks the pawn and it blocks black's counterplay. So that's not the best. But what Bernice is doing here is very good. She's developing the pieces before she takes action. And this is something that is extremely important that you first castle, protect your king, and then you can start to take actions. And the rooks should be on open files. This so is a fantastic rook... move by Bernice. Rook yeah, B1. so rook b1 is a good move. It's a rook on an open file. And then you need to plan your moves. So this is next stage. So this is called the middle game, this stage. And when you are in the middle game, then it's more about planning. So Bernice here is here, basically developing, developing her pieces. Um, and now came a very interesting move, which B5. So the question now is the, what white should do. Should white take the pawn? Or should white move the bishop? There's two options. And all of them are quite tactical. So taking the pawn is one option. Huh. Interesting position. Bernice has snagged a pawn. Very nice. Yes. Um, Black now has to try to probably get some, some really, um, some tactics going because not only are they down a pawn, but Bernice also has wonderful development. So if I were Black here, I'd be looking at trying to mix things up and confuse my opponent, looking at these potential tactics. But I'm not really sure they're going to all, any of them are going to work out that well, which isn't that shocking because White's played so well. I mean, chess has a lot of justice in it. If your opponent plays really well, a lot of the time the tactics don't work as well. Yeah, so the problem here is that it's going to be a bit hard to get the tactics to work. So this B5 was a bit too optimistic. Uh, the, that move should have been played earlier. So A6 first and then B5. That would have been a, a good plan. But, but it was very creative. I like I like the creativity of B5, trying to like lure, hoping that something like knight takes D4 win, works. That's that's what I think Black was thinking about, like hoping maybe they could play like this and then take this. Yeah. But and what, what is, is the catch? Yeah, the, the oh, problem oh, is that you can take here uh, with the knight, and then basically the knight defends the bishop. And now if you take on the with the bishop on D4, then basically there's a very important thing that you also have with this tactical motifs, which is intermediate moves. So instead of taking back the bishop on d4, you can take on d7 first. So bishop takes d7, and this is an intermediate move. And the result of this is when black takes back the bishop and white takes the other one is one bishop up for white. So that's why the, 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 that tactical operation doesn't work at all. So great game so far. I mean, yeah, that so was that was definitely the best. I think this is going to be the one that we're going to look at later, Pontus and opening explorer to show them more because it's a really good um it's a really good start. Yeah, exactly. And this is how you can get better because then you can use the the, the opening tree there, the opening explorer. You can see where you could have improved your play. And here it's quite clear that here black could have improved the play with by playing c5 instead of e6, because e6 was played in this position, and that's not the best move. And we can see here at the bottom, it's only, it's a, it's the sixth most popular move. And when yeah. black does play it, look at that, almost 70% of the time white wins, right? Yeah, so, so that c5, c5 or bishop d7 are, are the two moves that you can play here. You can actually do c5 here, and you can, but bishop g7 is, is the most uh, common one. Yeah, and they will you, usually transpose because you're just going to yeah. play c5 next. Yeah. And, and this is very important because c5 must be played because, because you, if you move one more move here, you can do bishop g7 and then knight f3. So we have to look at why c5 must be played. So let's do knight f3, for example. Yeah, knight f3. And, and then now... c5, c5. Let's, okay. let's do the c5 move. And here we can see that white can't take the c5 pawn. Because if white tries to take the c5 pawn. What happens, guys? What happens? You can write it in the chat. Anybody who's not playing, tell us what um, black does here. Queen captures queen. Um, nope. Nope. Not the best move, Dasha. Always good to look at captures. But speaking of captures, is there a better capture here? Yeah. Look at first first category was checks. So always looks at the checks first. So here you have two checks. 
a check and a capture at the same time. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bishop Jamie C3. Said it, and somebody else said a Bishop C3. And what is this in addition to a capture and a check? What other name is it that we just went over? What do we call this? Yeah, what is this? What tactical motif is this? What is it called? Double attack. Yeah, it's a double attack. And what's the double attack called with another name? Fork. Yeah, so it's a mm -hmm. fork. So this is a fork. You're basically forking the king and the rook. And that means that one of them has to move or you have to put something in between and then you can take the other one. And that's why c5 is so important because you basically want to get your knight out to c6, put pressure on the center and the bishop to g4 so you can pin. And this is another tactical motif, a pin. And in the end, the idea is that the white center will collapse. So maybe Jennifer, if you make some moves, um, you, yes, to illustrate this, what will happen, the consequences. Uh, so let's say that bishop b2, knight c6, uh, we can do castle. Uh, yes, do, yes, 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 do um, take on d4. Yeah. Pawn takes d4. Yeah, pawn takes back. And then you can already here take the pawn. So knight takes d4. So here, this is black's ID, that the white center will collapse. Exactly. And here, and here even Black if, has earned a pawn for, for basically nothing, no compensation. And even if you go here, bishop g4, and you're going to try doing the same thing, remove yeah, exactly, exactly. one of the defenders, remove. and then take yeah. on d4. Yeah, so, so that, that's why white has to be very careful here with the opening moves. So all this is prevented. And that's why many times they don't develop the knight to f3 even. And you know this is very advanced, but that that's why actually in in this move in this position, believe it or not, and you'll see this if you use Opening Explorer, the top move is not trying to develop and castle right away, which it usually is in most openings, but because of the specifics of the position, it's actually to play this weird looking move, Rook B one, so that you don't have to worry about Bishop C three and the fork as much, and that's why one of the reasons I was so impressed by Bernice playing Rook B one because. It's such an integral part of this opening to play Rook B1 for both attacking and defensive reasons. You know, it's a twofer. We get our Rook in a beautiful square and we remove it from the danger of this diagonal. Yeah. And, and yeah. also you can see that since Blacks, because this is what chess is about to predict, basically predict and prevent your, your opponent's ideas. And we can see here that one of the key ideas was to go with the... the black bishop from c8 to g4 to get either the pin or to even trade against the, the knight there on f3 and rook b1 actually in one way uh, i shouldn't say it always stops it but it makes it much harder because then there's always a pawn hanging on on b7 so it's like everything has a logic and this is this is the key to chess to understand that all moves made are logical there is always a logic, a reason behind why a certain opening moves are made. So Beautiful. all the moves here make sense. Let's so let's get back to the game. Yeah. Let's we check see in. Here. Well, well, she won. I think she must have won on time. Um, I think we're on game two now. Um, yeah. But let's try to look at people we haven't looked at yet. Maybe Jamie. Um, I haven't seen her games before. Penny Camp I haven't seen before. Um, Ilana, I think is new. So I don't know. I'm going to go with the Ilana to start. Um, she played E4. Beautiful. And now she played Knight C3. There's nothing wrong with this. This is not the main move, which you'll see if you look at the opening explorer, but it's certainly okay still to play. Um, a lot of times people put the bishop on C4, B5 first to add some flexibility that sometimes they want to create a big pawn center. Um, let's take a look at another yeah, game. So, so D4 here is uh, the, the main move uh, you can see to get into like the four knights is called. Uh, and it's actually a, a variation of the scotch. And that one is uh, very popular. So if white plays D4 here, black takes with the pawn and uh, white will take back with the knight. It's usually a way to strengthen uh, white's control over the center. And the it's center is, is, is a key in most openings. Apart from what we saw, which was a bit surprising for me to see the Greenfeld played because it's a very difficult opening, uh, usually only popular among grandmasters. 
very rare uh, for for other players because it's so hard to to really master it since you give up the whole center and try to basically destroy it and that's that's not um, I, I wouldn't say that's advisable uh, to start with that so if you are a newer player it's better actually to have an opening where you take control over the center because that makes it easier to play and then when you get a little bit more advanced or when you have studied the opening the greenfeld you can start to play it this but is I wouldn't a great advise game, by the play, way yeah i wouldn't advise to 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 uh, play the greenfeld without studying it because you really need to understand how to attack the center if you give up so much space um so by the way important. this is a great game so far pontus between um yeah. Ria in Ria is new, I believe. She's from Namibia. I don't know yeah. if she's also in the chat, but uh, she she really did play uh, some very interesting sequences here. Now the Sicilian played by Bernice, love it because we're gonna have a Sicilian theme tournament soon. And now, uh, yeah, most likely in February. So look out for it. So if if you wanna start by learning some opening, uh, then it can be smart to have a look at Sicilian. And now you... uh, cuz it's it's basically i would say that the cilian is is a very good opening to switch to because most people when they start to play they start to play e4 e5 and maybe d4 d5 but sicilian actually will develop your game a lot since it's much harder opening and is much richer of possibilities than e4 e5 much richer exactly and then you can outplay people uh, in a much better way if you play that. And um, what's interesting here is white has two major crossroads here, knight f3. Um, and when they play knight f3, usually they will play d4 to open up the position immediately. Or what we call the closed Sicilian to keep the position closed. Now in the game, um, Bernice and Rhea both played excellently in the opening because uh, now Rhea decided to change her mind and play knight f3. And she's saying, you know, hey, I changed my mind. I reserve that right. I'm going to play d4 next. And Bernice plays a very principled move here. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what Sicilian Bernice was trying to play, but a lot of times she could just transpose to it. Um, for instance, if she wants to play a dragon, she could just play g6 ideas. But instead she said, you know what? I'm going to try to take advantage of this move order and play e5 and stop you from playing d4, which is yeah. a, a very interesting idea. And we can look at the database afterwards because I think we'll see a lot of strong players that also thought that this was the correct path by Bernice. Yeah, this is a very common thing. And then uh, here it's very, very, the next move is, is probably the best one uh, because the weakness of this ID with playing e5 there is, what is it? Can anyone help us with that? What is the weakness? What weakness opens up when black plays e5? What is the, what is the potential problems or what is the problems? You can Any say it in the chat if you'd like, or you could unmute yourself. Yeah, any ideas? So what is the reason why not everyone in the world plays this e5 move here? White can move the knight to g5 and then capture the pawn and attack the queen and the rook. Yeah, well, but uh, you have this, to this open is, d3. This is true. Uh, will be hanging. This is true. This is true. Uh, basically, the, the plan is knight g5 and, and that f7 gets weak. And we can see here that the if Jennifer can maybe... Uh, you can do one arrow from the bishop on c4 to f7. So we can see here that the white squares here, d5, is extremely weak. White has total control over the squares here, and f7 is a weak point. So I have even played this myself from the white side, uh, a bunch of games actually. And the idea is that you can't do knight g5 directly, you have to do d3 first, because otherwise black can take uh, on g5 when a knight comes. But here, h6 is also a very smart move because it shows that black has understood what white is going to do, which is excellent. That's really good. It's, Although I, I would have maybe preferred to do it with bishop e7. Yeah, that's a, that's a theoretical move. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So it's, it's, a, it's a 
better way to do it. But yeah. all, all, all ways where you stop that plan, because that's really a devastating plan, is, is good, I would say. Yeah, and the reason we want to do Bishop B7 is because we really want to castle as quickly as possible. Uh, but it looks like Bernice did follow that plan soon thereafter. Yeah, and, and here, here, here we should actually go back a little bit because this rook e1 move, it, it's not, um, it's not a bad move, but it's not the best move. And if you go to to um, if you go back like uh, one move before the rook e1 move, before it was played, you will see here that this is the tricky part because here actually you need to find a plan. What what is what is white going to do here? And rook e1 is actually one way to do it, but then you have to find a quite difficult plan, which is getting the knight from d2 to f1 to e3, and then to either f5 or d5. And this is kind of, this is the kind of uh, you can say grandmaster maneuvers that uh, it, it's very advanced chess. Uh, I know it because I studied it. That's how I learned it. So I started it, and I started by looking at other uh, when I, before I was a grandmaster. So I looked at grandmaster games, and I saw it there, and then I copied. And this is what you can do as well now when you have the chess.com. You can look at, you can even follow other people's games. So you can enter like you are doing now, and you can see how a couple of grandmasters play online. You can check their moves. You can check their games afterwards. And you can see what are they doing. I don't really want and then you can copy it. Mm -hmm. And you can find all these ideas and the, the, the moves and the plans and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's about. So it's a good thing. We can see it a little bit further in the game because I think it was it's quite a, it's not much time uh, left. Yeah, let's go further, sure. Let's see how they, they play this out. And then we can take a quick look at Jamie's game. But I, I mean, yeah. overall, I just want to say this game is fantastic. Like, they really did play really well. Um, okay, and it's get to the end because Bernice won. Um, let's see where she is. Basically, the mistake here was that she allowed the pin at some point uh, as well. Uh, but it looks like a very well played game. And there uh -huh. was a there. If 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 you go back, go back. Uh, uh, so this, this, this 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 tactic will go back. Go back. This tactic was correct, but uh, it was the wrong executor. Yeah, go back. Go back. One move. Go back. Yeah. So right go back. Yeah. In this position, what should Y do here? What should White do here, guys? And congratulations. Do we see? I, I want to see those medals again and see who won. Sorry, I, I went over that quickly, but I saw Alana. I think I, I know Bernice got 2 0 too. So very good. Um, but yeah. we're going to go over this game because this was just a phenomenal game. And you're right, um, Pontus. This, is a, this was a, a very common um, tactical mistake that Rhea saw a great, great idea here. But in chess, you got to not only see a great idea, be sure to execute it properly. And what that often means is finding the right move order. So Rhea's idea was that after knight e7, which she played queen e7, that she could take on e5. And then if pawn takes, oopsie, we win a whole queen, right? But the problem is after knight e5, what else can black do here? And this, we, all, we already talked about this the intermediate moves although to be honest i mean black i guess has two ways to win here and that, and that's kind of funny because well yeah. uh, not not really uh there's only one correct way uh because you have to uh, black also has a uh, white also has a deflection possibility. okay yeah yeah uh, yeah that one's not as good yeah although so, yeah. yeah it's still it, it, there's one much better move here um yeah. what So even to the other also gets, gives, gives you a good position now. Yeah, exactly, but it's not as good, right. So what should Black do here, guys? Intermezzo, in between moves, Wish and Zug. It's got a lot of names. Yeah, Wish and Zug. I think the Namibians will know that because the, the German is uh, a bit known over there sometimes. Yvonne? 
Queen times e5. That's a really that's a really good looking move because it protects this bishop here. But there is a good move here for white that kind of makes this a lot murkier than the other option. And yeah. the move is a deflection move, actually. Um, and what is the deflection, actually? What is a, because we need to first uh, figure out what deflection, what it means. And deflection actually means that you have one piece that has a duty, which is the queen on e5. It has a duty to protect the bishop on h5. And then you make a move here. So you lure the queen away from that duty. And that is the deflection. And how can that be done? What move can white do here? Let's see. Somebody write it in the chat or unmute yourself. Bishop on d1 times bishop on h5. Not the best move because then oh, it's true actually though that you're going to be decoying this queen from the pawn. So that's actually correct, but there's a better decoy. Yeah, and also it's because you have to take in consideration that uh, white is a piece down. So to mm -hmm. get one pawn back doesn't do doesn't do the job for us. We need we need something else. We need we need to get a piece back. Excellent, Maria. Maria said it in the chat. Maria, did you want yeah. to unmute yourself and participate, or do you want me to just read it out? I'll read it out. She wrote this excellent move, F4. Yeah. And it's a hard move to see because F4 is a very weakening move of your king. But the thing is, we can't go any square on this, um, on this uh, rank because they're all covered. I mean, of course, we could go to C5, but then you'll trade queens and take our bishop on H5. So um, that gives us a sticky situation where we probably have to just take this and then you get our piece back. Yeah, um, and then white is in the game again. So, so, so that's, that's why it's not the best to take with the queen there. But you can make this intermediate move. And this is many times the solutions to puzzles. When you get them wrong or when you sit in a game and, and the tactics doesn't work, try to change the move order. That is absolutely that's, correct. That's extremely common. So here, in this position, what should black do? Instead of taking this knight right away, remember what Ponta said at the beginning of this lesson about forcing moves. And by the way, there's a lecture by Katarina and Mkova on our YouTube channel that I'm also going to put in the notes um, because I, she uh, did a really good job kind of outlining that as well. Excuse me. Yes? Excuse me. Yes? You can play a five. Um, a five. A five. Yeah, a five. Uh, it's also a move, yes. Uh, but it doesn't do much difference. Uh, when it comes to uh, the other move, it's it, it's a sort of deflection, so it it works as well. Uh, but you don't you don't need it actually in in this position. The yeah, idea you is, still is, have to do the right move here. Yeah. So you don't need you give a, up a pawn. Yeah. But it's an important resource. And, and in all the variation, it's actually very important. So Marie. The, what should like yeah, Bishop D1. We see it here in the chat. They they are saying this in the chat. Both Marie and, and AP and uh excellent Al Alvina. Yeah. So you take and now you can take Queen takes E5. Yeah. and black is a piece up so the intermediate moves are they really count and if you go back to the position because we are actually not done with that position totally uh, because there is there is uh there was more things there oh, by the way congrats to ilana maki marine and bernice who won um and let's see i think i lost the game temporarily um but yeah, i should be able to find it it was between bernice and um and Maria, so I just have to go. Yeah, and this is also how what you can do that you can enter uh, people's profile that, that you can actually show as well, uh, and how how to how they can contact each other. Uh, it uh, on on basically you can write to each other. You can write messages to each other. And look so who she's you, playing. If, she's playing Jen Shahadi, and she's playing the Grunfeld. I think. Uh -huh. A room pot over here. So good job, Bernice. That's why cool. she was ready for it, playing the um 
the the other side. So yeah, this yeah. is fantastic. Bernice is doing a good job taking advantage of the different of the different um, resources. Yeah, and here it's very interesting because you can see the games. Uh, if if you go to Bernice's uh, profile there, uh, you can like see the games. This is a um, uh, very so you can always check the games. You can see the games that are played, uh, and you can if if you can go through your own games because this we should show them as well. Th that's important. And um, that's usually what what I do. For example, if I play the game, I can check the game afterwards, so I can see where what what did I do right, what did I do wrong, what could have been improved, and I can also use these tools then. So so this was the basically the position, and the mistake is if you go back, if you go back one move. So instead of doing knight takes e7, the idea was to do the other way around. So you start with knight takes e5. But <laughs> even this uh, fails, actually. There is a solution for black. How this yeah. fails. Yeah, because of the combination of ideas, yeah. So there is, once again, this is difficult, but there is this deflection idea. That actually, the somebody mentioned. Is, so, uh, Bishop D one is is what they mentioned, but th that uh, after you can do that, do Bishop D one. Well, Bishop D one, and and then Rook takes Rook A takes D one, and here if Black takes back now with uh, D takes E, White's combination works. So Knight Knight takes E seven, for example. We just check. Yeah, so and then, we won. We ended then, up winning a, a pawn. Yeah, white has won a pawn, so that works. But and if the we go back, too, with yeah, our, yeah, lots of great squares for our knight potentially. Exactly, and d five is an excellent square. But if we go back to bishop takes d one, rook takes d one, there is once again this deflection. Mm -hmm. How you can destroy this combination? And so somebody mentioned really... this. Somebody mentioned this idea earlier in a different position. Yes. Exactly. And that, and that goes to show that like sometimes when you see an idea and it doesn't work, that doesn't mean you wasted your time. The idea yeah. might come up in another position. Yeah. So what should black do here? And there's once again a deflection. Yeah, Maureen, A5. That's correct. Very nice. Very good. Well done. So you do A5, which means that you deflect the queen because the queen has a duty here. It has to basically... Uh, be able to take something on e7. And now there is no squares on this diagonal. And even if you take knight takes e7, queen takes, and you can't keep your queen on this diagonal, which means that you have to take on a5. It's a double attack then, again. It's, yeah. it's a weird way to get there, but you, yeah. you're, you got that double attack. And, and then, then black can just take the, the, the knight on e5 and be a piece up. Yeah, white side so, got a couple of pawns for it, so it won't be easy in a blitz game. But there's so many good tactics. Maybe we should look at one other game. There was one other game that was compelling me before we um, wrap up today. Um, yeah, there, uh, I, it was. I think maybe one of a lot. It was a Jamie's game or Alana's game. Um, let's take a look at um, what Jamie's last game was because I think that was the one that I was kind of compelled by as well. Um, we'll see to see her profile. Yeah. yeah, and and this is uh, how you can actually check the game. So you can see here uh, by doing this, you enter the profile, and you can see the games there. You have the plus how you can enter into the game, and then you can play through it like this. So you can just play through the games. And, and this is excellent plays. And this is the Spanish or Rui Lopez, is named after a Spanish priest actually, a missionary. And we and, can look at this. Uh, opening and see what pops up that same yeah. thing that we talked about before and now you see all these top moves here to play against the Roy Lopez a6 knight f6 f5 bishop c5 so you can see them in order of popularity I, I mean I'm actually surprised d6 is so that far down the list it's like because yeah. I I know I feel like that is uh more of a common move it's like number it's number eight wow yeah. Yeah, and the reason why that's uh, so why, why it's not so popular is basically that you block the bishop on f8. That's the reason why it's not so popular. 
because then yeah, this yeah. bishop cannot get out. So this is considered very passive. Exactly. This was very popular uh, like 50, 60, 70 years ago, but among top grandmasters, but after that, everyone considers this too passive nowadays. So that's mm -hmm. why it's not played. And this is a good move, D4. Yeah, this is an excellent move, D4. Uh, put Basically taking control. And this is a very common way of taking control of the center. Like I said, you have the same way in Sicilian. And we saw also a possibility of the Scotch in one game with the four knights there. And this is the way to do it. It's an active way to take control over the center. Now bishop d7 was played. Good. Yeah. Stopping d5 yeah. from being a disaster. Yeah, so this is a theory, all of this. And usually knight c3 is the move. Yeah, good. And then knight f6. So all this is theory, actually. Yep, we still have, you can see here, we still and have 500. Short castle is, is, is the usual move here. Uh, instead, why play an interesting move? You played bishop g5 instead. Yeah. So now we're in totally uh, new ground, it seems, because almost everybody castled. Um, so bishop e7, she probably just transposed by castling now. Yeah. And okay, well, now here we have a weird move. So far, both players have been playing excellently. Um, but now bishop c4, what opening principle does this violate? Does anybody know what opening principle this violates? Um, Fanta, do you know? So we, we played bishop b5 and then we stuck our bishop back on c4. Now, this is not necessarily a terrible move, but it's important to know the opening principle that it violates. Maureen, right, moving the same piece twice in the opening before you're fully developed. It's always preferable to do something like rookie one, you know, get another piece into the game. Um, but Yeah, and, and, and also what's very crucial in, in uh, usually in this kind of structure, we saw it in, in the, the game there with Bernice. And um, uh, it's like, don't forget the pin, because black is, uh, if black gets a chance, then bishop g4 is an excellent move. And here black has that chance, for example. So a much better move if you want to do a waiting move is to do h3 instead of bishop c4. So yep. an h3 is always a functional move because it removes the, the possibility to take uh, the pin and it also gives the king a refugee where, where it can uh, hide later in the game. And indeed, black did play bishop g4 when given the chance. Yeah, and, and that's, that's a mistake. You should, shouldn't allow that. Uh, and here, they, 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 um, they go back, go back. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, D5, it's um, basically locks the position, which means that the bishop now on C4 is not effective. So if you go back, go, can you go back like uh, two moves? So I will just show the best way to play. So if you go back, go back, instead of bishop C4, uh, here, actually, the bishop has done its job, uh, so you can actually take on c6. This is actually the best move. And then if bishop takes, and then rook e1. So you move the rook to e1. This is uh, how white should have played, because this forces black to take on d4 and give up the center. Because there's no good and, way to stop pawn takes e5. Like, I'd much prefer yeah. to play rook e8 and resolve not resolve the tension in the center but unfortunately rookie eight doesn't protect the pawn right and yeah. i'm all cramped up so there's no really good way to do it no so um, you have I to take knight seven or something what would be bad about that move yeah that's really uh, a big problem yeah and that's Why another ta another tactical motif that you can use here Exactly. Like, cause I, I want to just like unclutter my position and hold the center. So I'm like, okay, knight d7 looks like it does all that, but it actually loses. I'll give you the first move. Bishop b7, queen e7. Now how does white win big, big material here? And this is the problem with being cramped. Sometimes you need more spaces for your pieces to retreat and black doesn't have it here. What can white do here? You play d5 that's yeah. right i think d5. that's elizabeth very talking good. very good and these yes squares that's correct locked. the bishop is locked in and it doesn't have any squares and then you lose it so so the best this is the best way to play in this position for white to take their exchange of the bishop and 
put pressure on the weak e5 pawn. But so it was played here, and and if you go back, go back, go back here, go back here, because here there is actually uh, here is tactics. It's not the easiest uh, to spot. No, yeah, this but, is a little tricky. Uh, but knight knight takes e2 is correct. Uh, where is one way to do it? Knight takes e2, so you can do that. And queen takes. Yeah, so and here, there, here there is tactics. There is tactics. What can black do here? This one is, is difficult. But there is one uh, move that actually wins. Yeah, and maybe we'll stop with this because this will this will be a good brain workout. Um, but yeah, it, it goes to show you need to always look at loose pieces, move order, um, wish and zugs. Lots of intermediate moves are in this idea. So black can actually win in uh, win a clear pawn in one move. Win a pawn. Uh, two, two, two moves actually, two moves. Two most combination. Okay, so Jamie suggests knight e4. So yeah, after that's I... that's that also uh, is interesting, but it's uh, it's not correct because there is a problem. Um, well, what was your idea, Jamie? If bishop e7. <laughs> Her idea, I think, was knight c3, so that if bishop d8, knight takes e2 check. Yeah, and you end up being up a piece at the end of the line, right? So that's yeah, that, would that would be, be perfect. So cool. Perfect. Yeah. There is a uh, there is a problem with this. So knight takes e4. The only other option is queen takes uh, e4. And now the problem is that, for example, if you do um, bishop takes f3, bishop takes e7. There is so many intermediate moves in this line. I know it's insane. And uh, if you take now back, if you take the bishop on e7, then white can take uh, on f3 white and up be a piece, piece of. So you and have to continue to take bishop takes e4, and then bishop takes d8. And the problem is that when black takes back now on d8, white will take on e4 and be a piece up. So knight is e4. Yeah. It's a very good work. idea. Instead, you would have to try playing f5 here. Yeah, and the problem is that this will be the same because now there's yep. once again an intermediate move. Uh, instead of moving the queen, you have to go for the, the hard move here, which is bishop takes e7. So after bishop takes e7, pawn takes uh, e4, you take the queen again. And then white is so many, much material up. Two so pieces, if, right? You can only yeah. take them one at a time. That's the problem. So you have yes. to pick which one to take, and you're going to end up being down a piece. Um, so, so, but we had the right. Uh, from, famously from, said, "Yeah, Maureen, only Maureen take one actually." At a time. Maureen, Maureen had got the, it. Yeah, Maureen yeah, got she it. She got it. She got it. So the right move is knight takes d5, which is different, and this is a standard um, tactic that is extremely common. You have so many chances of this. And I would say that most chances are missed. Yep. And what do you do so, after Bishop so, E7 now? So learn this one because you can win so many games on it. It, it It's extremely effective. And you, you basically, if you go back, Jennifer, uh, yes, go back. Uh, well, well, let them know what, what you do here. We need to look at this first. Yeah. Yeah. Bishop, and what to do after Bishop takes E7. And, Basically, bishop takes e7, and you have knight takes e7. That's, That's the, the key, key thing, yeah. yeah. So you take back with the knight here. And I think the problem is this doesn't have a name exactly. I like to call it with my students a switchback, but it doesn't have an obvious name, which is why sometimes people miss it so much. When you have yeah. a name for something, you see it more easily. Yeah, this is true, that this is not defined. It should be one of the tactical definitions, actually. Uh, so it should be on that page. But it's not. So that's uh, that's something that should be added. So maybe uh, you can suggest this to chess.com uh, that they will add it. But if you go back to this position, I will just explain the tactic. And the, tech, the idea of the tactic is that you have this diagonal where black is piled up with the queen on d8 and the bishop on e7. And then you actually clear the diagonal, which creates a threat towards the bishop on h4 by knight takes d5. So if, if, if black takes takes back, then uh, when you do knight takes d5, if white takes back on d5 with knight takes d5, you can just take the bishop on h4. So bishop takes h4, and you are a pawn up for nothing, no compensation. And you still have this pin here, which is kind of cool. Yeah. 
So, so this so great. The, this is there were some really great tactics in this game. I mean, overall, this was a really good practice tournament. Um, before we before we stop, does anybody have any last minute questions for us? And again, um, if you played in the tournament um, and you don't have your account upgraded, I know you're out there. If for some reason you were only watching, make sure you send me a chat. I will save the chat, so I'll be able to use that to figure out. Um, and yeah, this was super fun. Thanks, Pontus. Yeah, so make sure to send the, the um, your username to to Jennifer. And also, before we end, Jennifer, we should show them the opening section because this is uh, extremely important. This is a good good area, and the second uh, the second area, exactly intro to book openings, for example, that's an excellent one uh, to check. And then you can just learn the most classical openings and see how it works. And this is a very good thing. You can learn and study there. And this, the second thing is the videos. And uh, that's the, that's that's what you get from us today. Uh, and it's, uh, so you you basically, your choices, you, you control the choices by this menu here on the left side that Jennifer is using all the time. And there they learn, under learn, you can find all these videos and all the ideas. And there's some really good, there's some really good positions and it's nice because there's no ads. I mean, there's a lot of good content on YouTube also. And last time we did a theme tournament, Pontus collected YouTube videos and, you know, we might do that again for the Sicilian theme tournament, but it is nice that uh, sometimes there's a lot of ads in those. So you, you just have only the video when you go through um, this section. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's good. a plenty to do. Um, any last minute questions, guys? Um, oh, we should tell you that January 30th is going to be our next session. That's going to be at 11 a.m., so an hour later, because that one's going to be with the American girls, too. Yeah. So, yes, make sure um, that you use your accounts as much as you can. That's uh, and also, like a small homework to the next time, uh, make sure to challenge some um, some other girls in the group so that you get in some games. At least five, at least five. Yeah, so challenge five other ones in the group on some time control that you choose. It can be fast games or, or some move per day, whatever you wanna do, so that we can see that you you know how to use the functions there. And depending on your preference and your internet connection for homework, I want you to either work on your puzzle rating and raise it by 300 points, or you can work on Puzzle Rush. If you've never done Puzzle Rush before, then try to get at least five points higher than your first attempt. If you've already been doing it, try to increase your score by at least three points. And you know we can kind of take a look and see if you're on your high. That's That's the goal though that you keep getting better. And then when you plateau, it, you can go to something else. If you've been trying for weeks and weeks and weeks and you can't get higher than your current score, it's time to maybe go in a different direction, look at, look at um, videos, you know, play some games. But right now, I don't think any of you are at that point because you haven't put that many hours into puzzles. So um, you, you, could, you can get some time in in the next couple of weeks. Excellent. And uh, then I think we are done for today. So, uh, yes, get out there and start practice. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Great job today. I thought it was a wonderful class. And yes, some people are asking me, there will be a link to this video. Yes, the session was really good, very informative. Um, I think they can still continue uh, putting in their questions and um, on chess.com and um, you will, you will, you will break it down for them, for those who didn't understand anything. Yeah, put it, um, put the, put the questions yeah. in the public chat so that if somebody else, so that way, like if Pontus or you know, sometimes Sabrina checks the chat, she's come to a bunch of our lessons. That way, whoever sees it first can answer, and also other people who have the same question can benefit from it as well. So that would be the best way to go about it. But yes, like at the end of the day, if you're going to get really good at chess. 90%, 80, 90% of it is also about you and your own effort. Um, so that's why the most things that a teacher can teach you is how to 
work on your own. Yeah, you need to train. So good. So then I think we're down for today. So let the girls go. Thank you so much, Pontes, for um, giving us your insight today. It was fantastic. It was my pleasure.